My name is Glenn O'Bear. I'm the RDI Director at Exacto. And today I'm here with Jeremy Williams, the founder and CEO of American Drone. So Jeremy, thanks for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about American Drone? What kind of products and services you guys offer? Hey, Glenn. Uh, good to be here. Thanks for having me on. Uh, sure. American Drone um, is a Part 137 agricultural aircraft operator, which in FAA lingo means that we are custom applicators using unmanned aircraft. So we currently operate within the state of Wisconsin and we perform aerial applications, both liquid and dry products by air. So these products can be chemicals designed to mitigate economic pests, such as an insect or a weed, um, but can also be foliar feeds, organic nutrients, uh, liquid and dry fertilizers, or even cover crop seeds. So basically anything that we're legally allowed to apply from an aircraft. Uh, also through special scheduling software, we make it very easy for our service customers uh, to book their aerial applications with us, which has traditionally been kind of a challenge, uh, understanding as an aerial applicator, understanding what the customer wants to do and more importantly, where they want to do it. Because if you're looking at a uh, satellite image of an area, kind of all the fields look the same. So uh, along with being a custom applicator, we're also a, a full service dealer. So we provide all of the knowledge and the sales training, uh, regulatory guidance to somebody uh, who wants to become a owner operator of the drones. So customers in, on this side of the business are typically larger growers or somebody that wants to start their own application business as a small business. So when someone decides to be an owner operator, uh, after sales support is absolutely critical in this business. Uh, this is not a typical camera drone or something like that where a short period of time of training and you're good to go. There's a lot going on here. So we kind of pride ourselves on the service and the training uh, that we provide after the sale. You know, um, being custom applicators ourselves, this puts American Drone in a, in a really unique position to be able to understand our customers' needs and provide them with unmatched support every single step along the way. So the bottom line really is for us is uh, making our customers, we say, legal, safe, effective, and confident when they go to make their aerial applications. That's great. That, that makes sense. So I'm, I'm thinking about the technology of drones. You mentioned the, you know, this like the hobby drone that has a camera and um, I've flown ones like that, or, you know, I think we've seen people flying those out in public. Um, can you talk about the technology of these spray drones and just how rapidly is that changing? And like, how do they look this year compared to a spray drone last year or two years ago? Like, what does that landscape look like? Yeah, good question. So um, the drones that you think of or you you see, you know, that take pictures and videos, they're they're called uh, enterprise drones. That's kind of like the enterprise side. Uh, what we're dealing with here is agricultural drones. So these are very specific drones that uh, not only can that take pictures and videos, but they're actually doing something. They're dispensing a product from the air. So uh, it could be liquid or dry, but uh, whatever kind of product that you are trying to dispense, typically in an agricultural setting, uh, these, these drones carry that product with them. So when we say these are heavyweight drones, with payload, you could be talking about a 225 pound drone that's 12 feet in diameter. So these are, are much larger and and can carry a lot more simply because they're carrying their payload with them that they're about to dispense over a certain area. Got it. So I'm curious about, uh, you know, like I've heard this concept of uh, how many acres per hour can you spray and kind of at what point do you cross that threshold where, um, you know, in a certain field for a certain application, uh, this technology 
now exceeds the capabilities of a ground-based sprayer. Um, can you talk about the trade-offs of of those kind of factors and where where you see the industry right now with the latest technology? Sure, and and this is a question that that obviously is very important to a lot of people, not only existing applicators but growers themselves. Um, we look at the aircraft as another tool to be used on, on the farm. So whether that be uh, a ground sprayer or, or a tractor, you, you use the right piece of equipment for the right job. And, and certainly uh, the agricultural drones are not a silver bullet for every air, uh, application that you're going to make. So it is really important to understand you know, what job are you trying to accomplish? And then what is the best piece of equipment to do that? So there is going to be pros and cons of a ground applicator, a, a drone, fixed wing helicopter, backpack sprayer. They're all going to have certain pros and cons. And the key there is to be educated and know, okay, for this job, I'm going to do this particular piece of equipment is my best choice. So what kind of uh, what kind of applications or fields or scenarios uh, do UAVs or drones kind of provide that? Um, when when are they the right tool? Like, where do you see that? Yeah, great question. So uh, some of the synopsis where you would be looking for a drone to do the application um, are, are, are pretty fast, but we can talk about a few of them. One would be if you have a, a recent rainfall. So there's a good example. So the field that you want to make an application to may be very wet and saturated. Now, the idea of taking a very heavy ground rig out with a thousand gallons of liquid at 8.3 pounds per gallon is going to, to become a problem. Um, you're going to sink into the soil, make bigger ruts, um, all that kind of thing. So, so that's a good scenario where the ground is very wet and you do not want to have a ground-based unit out there. Um, another one might be when the uh, crop gets very tall. So if you have corn that's at tassel and you wanna apply a fungicide, the drone is gonna fly over at 12 feet above the tassels and be able to make that application of say a fungicide where a ground um, piece of ground equipment is gonna have to have that kind of clearance to clear that, that crop, uh, which a lot of times becomes an issue. And uh, you enter into what they call green snapping, where the corn stalk is actually getting snapped off just by being bent over by the application equipment. So um, not uh, hurting the yield that you already have by running over uh, existing crop. That is another good scenario. Uh, when you talk about uh, UAVs or unmanned aircraft versus manned aircraft, uh, the typical air tractors that you see. Uh, some of the advantages for the unmanned aircraft would be a field that had lots of obstacles. So say that the field is cut in half by uh, a highline wire or the field is surrounded by 50 foot trees. In scenarios like that, it becomes extremely dangerous for the helicopter pilot or the fixed wing pilot to be able to apply in that field. So the drone can go in um, and very accurately go right up to the edge of the trees, turn and go back. So you're getting a good application. Uh, you're not putting anybody's life in danger uh, and you're doing it you know, exactly when and where you want to. Um, so those are some scenarios uh, of other aircraft or, or other uh, pieces of equipment that uh, where the drone can shine. But at the end of the day, I think one of the big things is availability. Availability is going to be uh, something that is extremely important, and it's only going to get better as time goes on. So availability has always been low, or the supply of aerial application has always been traditionally low, because there's uh, a, just a certain amount of, of fixed wing operators out there. Uh, with this technology, with the drone technology, it really has the ability to put the operating of the drone in the hands of the grower. So through our program, where we train someone to be confidently using this aircraft and safely and legally, um, most people can do that. Um, so when we talk about availability, the more and more people that end up owning these aircraft, 
and the more businesses that we have running the, the unmanned aircraft, the more available the drone application is going to become. And we all know that when it comes to application, timing is absolutely critical. So the better timing that we have, the more yield response we get, and and um, the the grower's investment is uh, is returned. Really interesting. I'm thinking about fixed wing, and I'm thinking about ground sprayers, and just the the decades of research that the industry has under its belt. You know, we've been using ground sprayers for a very long time, um, and then you, you kind of project out. Uh, now with UAVs, you know, you're using uh, drones that just came out this year and you're spraying with them within a month after they came out, right? It's, you know, it's moving so fast. Um, I feel like a lot of the research and the, you know, definition of the field is, is kind of happening by the end users. And uh, and and I know universities and others are, are also heavily involved in this area. Uh, I'm curious, what do you see as some of the biggest challenges that you're facing with this fast moving industry and, and whether, whether it's regulatory or it's agronomic or, you know, mixing and loading, like what are some of the things that, that challenge you and that you'd like to see more research and more um, innovation and progress on? Well, Glenn, I think you hit it right on the head. The biggest challenge that we have is education because of this industry is, is exploding in its pace right now. So it is very challenging for the new operator, uh, the researcher, the regulatory body to get a handle on this technology. It is so effective and is so good at what it does, but everybody needs to have a very good understanding before they go out and make these applications. So, um, you know, uh, it, it, it really, it really, the education part really presents challenges in, in communicating, um, you know, not only to these new users, but the regulatory bodies uh, of the advantages of how the technology works and not only what the technology can be used for, but what it cannot be used for. So, um, you know, again, it's not the silver bullet when it comes to options that growers have when deciding on a particular application. And it's just really important to understand the application method, which application method is best for you uh, and, and what might not be a great, a uh, good choice in a particular situation. So um, I think drones are just simply adding another extremely valuable option for the grower, but we have a lot of very brilliant researchers getting into this field now and understanding, look, this thing is here to stay. And the more we know about it, the more effective and safe the applications can become. Um, you know, one, one, I, I, would, I would say any particular thing about the, the drones themselves to, to really understand uh, personally would be for me, the drift control. Uh, that that is a, a very um, important thing to understand when you're talking about aerial applications. Uh, we always say that you know in an aerial application, the main goal is to take your product and hit target. And and when when we talk about hitting the target, um, understanding what products we can have to help in that goal. Uh, what settings that you would have in particular situations, you know, we're, we're releasing a product into an airstream. Um, so there's a lot of dynamics that are going on there and the drones are new. They're downwashes straight to the ground, normal to the ground versus a typical fixed wing or helicopter application where it's kind of parallel to the ground. So it's uh, it's a very interesting, very valuable uh, technology, but we all need to understand it better. So. You know, the, the, the more people that get involved, and I've seen a lot over the last year and a half, a lot of people getting on board and doing different tests and research is, is extremely valuable for, for all of us. Talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what kind of um, industry groups are coming together, uh, whether it's applicators locally or nationally, or um, have there been conferences to get together and talk about research and, you know, what kind of activities like that are happening these days with UAVs? Yeah, that's a good question. So there is a bunch of different um, 
app, uh, associations that are forming. Uh, we are actually involved in one that uh, has uh, got a very, very good response. Uh, uh, called it the uh, drone uh, Ag Drone User Group. Um, so we did this last spring. We did a uh, all virtual um, over the weekend or Saturday and Sunday. And we had over 200 people join in from 13 different countries. Uh, we're also planning our next event, which is going to be in-person and virtual uh, down in, in Alabama this, uh, this coming winter, uh, middle to end of February. We haven't worked out the exact dates yet, but we, uh, we have gotten a lot of uh, feedback and it's um, basically comes down to the fact that there is a lot of new users and they want to know how to do it correctly. So uh, getting together and talking about that, sharing experiences and helping us all learn is, is just a fantastic thing. And, and it seems like there is a lot of people on board that, that want to see that happen. Exciting. So I'm thinking now five to 10 years in the future um, with how fast the technology is changing, with all the studies that are happening now, I mean, what, what does the future of UAV applications look like? Well, I think that in, in our opinion, there's going to be uh, a, a lot more users. Again, almost anyone can go through training, proper training and understand how to use these safely and effectively. So it becomes a, a tool that just goes into the hands of many, many more people. Um, I think for us, what we see is a, a deviation between a, a, a grower that has maybe one to two or 3,000 acres, and they're just going to own an aircraft and get their own um, acres done. As far as the commercial side of this, we see the drones getting bigger and bigger. So uh, I think you're always going to have a size of, of egg drone that is very usable for a certain amount of acres every year, and it's going to be operated by the grower themselves. But I think you're also going to see them uh, increase dramatically in size for the commercial operators, the uh, the applicators that are in Iowa where the corn goes to the horizon and it's just a, a lot of acres. I think the fixed wing guys roughly do about 2.5 million acres per year. So, um, to be effective in that arena, obviously the unmanned aircraft are going to have to get a lot bigger. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, I really appreciate your time and thank you for sharing a little bit about your company and about all the exciting stuff happening in the UAV field. So um, I, I'm excited. Uh, I'm imagining five or 10 years in the future, you know, today you, you're driving down the highway and you're, you see ground-based sprayers and you see all the activities that that farmers are going through and it, it's exciting to imagine uh, a diverse landscape of of different application technology including UAVs so uh, thanks for for sharing those thoughts and thanks for joining us we see the same vision and uh, it was good to see you and appreciate you having us on thank you thanks <laughs>